Hi everyone, I'm Jennifer with Mindful Waste and today we are going to talk about how to set up a worm bin. We get this question a lot and we're so excited that people are interested in raising worms on their own and to help um, fight food waste. So it's not complicated. Uh, that's the number one thing we want to get across that um, it's very easy to do and you don't need um, anything fancy. We're going to show you all a bunch of different types of bins that you need. But essentially, worms need four things, and this is what I want you to remember. They need air, really good airflow, and they need water, because that's how they breathe through their skin, and they need a source of carbon, their bedding, so that's what they live in, and then they need their nitrogen, which they get from your food waste. Okay, so if you remember those four things, you are um, already off to a really good start. So. Worms, red wiggler worms are epigenic, so that means that they um, naturally live in the top six inches of the soil. So they're not like other earthworms that burrow down deep. These guys, um, they thrive on any decaying matter. So in the wild, if you were to go look for a red wiggler composting worm, you should be looking at an old leaf pile, a compost pile that's already done cooking, that's cooler. Um, and their favorite, very favorite is a manure pile. They love cow manure, horse manure, that's, they're in their own. We know that we are looking for a shallow bin um, that is opaque because they don't, worms do not like the light, and one that provides enough ventilation because they really, really need that airflow. So the probably the most popular bin that people choose to use um, for their vermicomposting system is a rubber made tote like this one. Um, you can see that we drilled holes on the top to increase the ventilation and then we can drill holes on the bottom as well and you can actually stack this bin into another so that in case there is any extra moisture it will just drain at the bottom bin. All right, so then you want to start with your bedding, which is the source of carbon that the worms need to live in. They don't want to live in food waste. They want to. They want a nice fluffy bed. Um, so the most popular thing that we use is just shredded newspaper. You just shred it in pieces like that, and um, then you can soak this in water, and then you're gonna wring it out, and then you want it to have the consistency of like a well wrung out sponge. So not sopping wet, but definitely you don't want to start it with just dry newspaper because again, the worms need that moisture to breathe. Um, so you use that. Another popular ones that they love are these cardboard egg cartons. Um, you can shred these as well. They love these little um, areas right here. We find that they um, use these to lay their eggs. And the things you want to, oh, and another, good source of bedding is some dried leaves. Um, you can use that. Or this is called coir. It's coconut fiber. Um, you'll see a lot of worm farmers will use this. Um, we like to use what we have because that's the whole idea of what we're doing is we're trying to um, reduce waste and we don't have coconut trees here. So we're just going to use what we have. Um, and that is newspaper or other types of paper. Just stay away from bleached paper and glossy magazines. You don't wanna use that. We talked about the Rubbermaid bin, which is great because we're trying to reuse as much as we can or repurpose. Another um, bin that we have used is just an old wooden dresser drawer. Again, it doesn't have to be anything fancy as long as um, you're providing the right bedding and then you can see this has a lot of surface area so um, and it's shallow and you can certainly raise worms successfully in here we could you could even drill more holes if you wanted to um, but wood is very breathable it's it's a really great uh, material for worms um, whereas the plastic will hold in uh, the moisture a little bit better but it does get a little bit hotter it depends on where you're living conditions are where you're raising your worms. So there's pros and cons to both using wood and plastic. Um, if you are not a DIY type of person, that's totally cool. Um, there are so many different worm bins on the market that you can get. This here is the Worm Factory 360. Um, I think we have 
used every single model. But this one is um, really cool because you start your bin, your worm bin on the bottom layer, and then um, when the worms are done with that, you add another layer. And so worms will naturally migrate up when they're hungry, and um, then this is easy to harvest because the worms will just, when you're, they're done on the first layer, they're gonna move on up to the second floor, and then you can just take the castings right off of um, the, first, the first layer. You can see um, all those beautiful, rich castings right there. So we are all about repurposing and reusing what we have. So that's why it's kind of fun to just look around in your house, see what you have. Um, and chances are you will have a lot of different containers that you can raise red wiggler worms in uh, without having to spend the money and buy a new one.